good afternoon welcome to church please be seated ha hallelujah <clears throat> hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. only Rachel is here but hallelujah Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit. We know he's here already. We just want more. In the name of Jesus. Lord, before we start the word, we want to commit and commend the nation of Nigeria into your hands. Lord, that your light will shine. Amen. And that your peace will reign. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, that your light will shine Amen. and your peace will reign in Nigeria. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Last week, we started the series, The Treasures of Darkness. We started The Treasures of Darkness. And um, one big thing is that God is not afraid of the dark hallelujah that in fact god lives in the dark he creates and surrounds himself with darkness hallelujah what that meant for us was that not every darkness is orchestrated by the devil hallelujah and we said that so therefore sometimes the prayer shouldn't be god get me out of here the prayer is father what do i mind from here the prayer is not, Father, get me out of here. The prayer is, Lord, what is the advantage in this darkness? Hallelujah. We said by last week's teaching that some of the things we can mine out of a season of darkness, some of the treasures we can mine out of the season of darkness is, one, the presence of God because God dwells in darkness. We saw it in the scripture. We said the other thing was new revelation because a man who is in the dark is alone with God. He's bound to hear something new. We talked about the deliverance and victories that happened because darkness ensued. What that means is that there will be no deliverance, there will be no victory, there will be no testimony if darkness didn't exist. Hallelujah. And then we talked about salvation of lost souls. And we had... Um, scriptures to back all of this so if you missed last week i'll encourage you to um go back and listen to it if you go to our youtube channel it'll be there and um if you can scroll down through facebook you would also find it there but the easiest way to get to our messages is to go and download the bdme mark Modi app and just go to the date you are looking for and you'll find all the services for the day hallelujah so as we continue on this journey today, God eff effectively God is reminding us and speaking to me about why he entrusts us with darkness. Who will think that darkness will be something that God would entrust to us? And he's saying to me that I entrust darkness to you because sometimes the greatest power and grace is released and revealed in the press of darkness. The greatest power and the greatest grace is released in the, and revealed in the press of darkness. So when God finds you worthy to bring you into darkness with himself, there's certainly something in there that you will be able to distill. Hallelujah. Today we would um, talk about what I call the solutionist grace. The solutionist grace. God's treasures processed in the seasons of darkness for his glory. And for the benefit of humanity. Part of what Pastor said when he was looking at the, um, the, the uh, embracing the um, satisfaction of unselfish thinking was that he said that the, unself the unselfish thinker does for others. He thinks big picture. He does for others more than he thinks about himself. Hallelujah. And I'm saying that sometimes one man will go through a season of darkness because there's a whole generation's destiny that is riding on that man's in, uh, interaction or transaction within darkness. 
And this is a series that's just unfolding. We will get to see many ways and many reasons why God entrusts us with darkness. But today we are looking at the solutionist grace or the solutionist anointing. That's the anointing that God puts upon his own in darkness so that he can become a, a solution provider to the generations. Hallelujah. So as we talk about it, I said we're talking about the solution is grace. So just to background it and so that you'll be clear, if you go with me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, of course you know. There is a fivefold uh, mandate that God is giving to man. Be fruitful, be, uh, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and dominate it. The third arm of that fivefold mandate is the mandate to replenish the earth. If you have ever heard me, if you read the book Destiny Navigational Application or you've heard me talk about this mandate, I would say to you that God knew before the environmentalists realized that the ozone layer was thinning, God knew that that would happen. Before men, men would think that there will be terrorist attacks, God knew that that will happen. And the simple reason is because he knew that man will not remain a good human being. And as long as man does not remain a good human being, there will be problems and there will be challenges that would require solutions. And so sometimes God will take hold of one man and he will take that man into a dark place because he needs to fashion him fit for the battle that is ahead. That's why the Bible says something like this. It says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Darkness can be a blessing because God will give you revelation that will become a solution for destinies. And Darkness can be a blessing because God will give you a revelation that will become a solution and a blessing for the destinies of many and for generations to come. Hallelujah. So the third part of this is replenishment. And if you know what the word replenishment means, it just means to replace what is lost or what is depleted or what is not enough. And if part of the mandate that God gave to man is that man would replenish the earth, have you sat down to wonder what part of the earth am I assigned to for replenishing? And what will it take for me to be able to replenish that part of the earth? One of the things that scares me the most is that God will entrust me with something. Because the moment God entrusts you with something, there is a generation that is tied to that thing, yes? And that's why it is very scary to fail God in the thing that he has entrusted to you. Because it means that that generation will be a lost generation, even if only for a season, before God would redirect them to another person who might be your replacement. And any way you look at it, it's not good news. So when something is missing, when there isn't enough of something, what the Bible says should happen is that there will be a replenishment. Now, someone will say, why God be the one? Why won't God just be the one replenishing these things? Those who have been coming will know. If you've been listening, you will know that there is something called the law of territory. The law of territory suggests or means says that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria cannot make laws in the Federal Republic of Ghana or the Ghanaian Republic. I don't know what they are called. The president of the United States of America can suggest. But that's why Putin isn't listening to him right now. Because he may be the president of the free world. He's not the president of Russia. Who understands this conversation? It is called the law of territory. Now in the Bible there is something known as the law of territory. The law of territory in the Bible means that the earth belongs to God, yes. But he has given it to the sons of men. And because God has given it to the sons of men, what cannot happen is God cannot just show up in the earth and decide what he wants to do without passing through a man. Yesterday I was explaining this concept to a group of people. And I said to them, it's like when you pay rent for a house. 
I live in a rented apartment. So I have paid for the year. My landlord cannot decide that because that, uh, that place I live in is a gated environment that he wants to um, 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 celebrate a, a, a birthday for his child and we just show up on Saturday morning with his canopies and his chairs and begin to set them up. The simple fact that I have paid means that he needs to ask me if he could use the premises that day, if it would be convenient for them to hold a, a party in that premises. And I didn't build the house. I only rented it. But because I have paid for that duration of time, he can't just come and set up his canopies and bring his musicians and begin to hold a party. If your landlord can't come to your one-room apartment and just walk into your bathroom to have a shower... God cannot show up on the earth to have a shower without your say-so. And because of that law of territory, when things begin to fall apart and the center can no longer hold, God picks a man and he says, by this man, I will replenish and reorder what it is that has become chaotic. Hallelujah. Amen. That man within the, um, the, the, the confines of today's message, is known as the solutionist. He has upon him something called the solutionist anointing, or he walks in the solutionist grace. Hallelujah. A solutionist, therefore, is one who is equipped, empowered, skilled, and adept at problem solving. He's someone who is equipped, empowered, skilled, and adept at problem solving. Solutionists are men and women processed by God to know his mind, see what he is doing, align with his will, and be willing to manifest in a time or a place of need. I'll take that one more time in case you're taking notes. I said solutionists are men and women processed by God to know his mind, see what he's doing, Align with his will and be willing to manifest in a time or a place of need. What that simply means is that if you have the solution is grace, you can be sure that God is going to process you. And today we're talking about the processing that happens in darkness. Hallelujah. He will process you so that number one, you will know his mind for this season. Number two, you will see what he is doing. Number three, you will align with his will in that season. But most importantly, number four, you'll be willing to, willing to manifest in a time or a place of need. What that means is that if the prison is where you are needed, then as a solutionist, you have to be willing to be manifested in the prison because the solution you carry on the inside will only be, only be useful to those who are in prison. Does this make sense? Because of that, there have been men and women who have had to go to jail simply because they are a solution. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I want us to focus, we'll be doing a lot on this particular, um, in this particular series, we'll be doing a lot out of the book of uh, Daniel and Ezra at some point. But today I want us to go to the book of Daniel chapter number one. Daniel chapter number one. Daniel chapter number one. I want us to read. It's a long read, but it is essential that we took a look at it. Daniel chapter one. I'm going to be reading verse number one to 17 and then verse 20. Verse one to 17 and verse 20. I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Classic Translation. It says, in the third year of the reign of Jeho Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jeho Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, into his hand, along with a, pair, a part of the vessels of the house of God. 
and he carried them into the land of Shina, Babylonia, to the house of his God, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. And the Babylonian king told Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring in some of the children of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, well favored in appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, discernment, and understanding, apt in learning knowledge, competent to stand and serve in the king's palace, and to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. Verse 5, and the king assigned for them a daily portion of his own rich and dainty food and of the wine which he drank. And they were be so educated and so nourished for three years that at the end of that time, they might stand before the king. Among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief of the eunuchs gave them names, gave them names. Daniel, he called Bathsheba. But, but, but Shazza, the king's attendant, Hananiah, he called Shadrach, Mishael, he called Meshach, and Azariah, he called Abednego. But Daniel determined in his heart that he would not defile himself by eating his portion of the king's rich and dainty food or by drinking the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might be allowed not to defile himself. Now Daniel, God made Daniel to find favor, compassion, and loving kindness with the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear lest my lord the king who has appointed your food and your drink shall see your faces worse looking or more sad than the other youths of your age. Then you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had sent over, that oh, has set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Prove your servants, I beseech you, for ten days, and let us be given a vegetable diet and water. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat of the king's rich dainties be observed and compared by you, and deal with us, your servants, according to what you see. So the man consented to them in this matter and proved them for seven days. And at the end of 10, uh, for proved them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, it was seen that they were better looking and had taken on more flesh than all the youths who ate of the king's rich dainty, da dainties. So the stewards took away their rich dainties and wine and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. For these four youths, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and Daniel had understanding in all kinds of visions and dreams. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king asked them, he found favor ten times better than all the learned magicians and enchanters who were in his whole realm. Daniel and um, um, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four young men that were taken out of Israel, out of Jerusalem, to um, Babylon as slaves. The Bible said that Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem and God gave the king of Judah into his hand. And because God gave the king of Judah into his hand, Nebuchadnezzar had the audacity to go into the temple of God to take the vessels of and implements of worship and took them with him to Babylon and put them in Shina in the house of his own God. What that means is that whether you see it like that or not, God had, uh, oh, the door had been opened and somehow, um, um, maybe by sin or something, J um, Jerusalem had been, um, had been plundered and desecrated by an unholy king. Hallelujah. Now, if they took the things and they didn't take the people, then Israel will recover quickly. But not only did they take these things, they also took Israel's best. 
Because if you look at the description of the young men that they set the sugar and bring from Israel, he said to the, the king said to his eunuch, he said, youths without blemished, well favored in appearance and skillful in all wisdom, discernment and understanding, apt in learning knowledge, competent to stand and serve in the king's palace. He said, bring some of the children of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility. What happened in this case was Israel's best were taken into darkness. Because Babylon was a stronghold of darkness in that time. How would God allow his best to be taken away and put in darkness? In a nutshell, darkness will always come for your best. Because in this case, it came for Israel's future best. When you read the account uh, in the book of Daniel of these young men and the exploits that they carried out, you will know that these were people who had been graced by God and put aside and set aside for his work. One thing I have found out and I have seen it time and time again is that sometimes the child that is the most plagued is the one that is the most graced. The devil can tell that this child is graced. The devil can tell that this person is graced. So he throws everything at him because as long as this person would agree that he is no longer worthy of living in the identity that God is giving him, darkness can overwhelm. No wonder God decided that sometimes in some places he would create a pavilion of darkness against around himself. Because God had to be standing in darkness for him to be able to process us in darkness. So Daniel and his friends were taken into Babylon that was darkness. I don't get it. Why would God let this happen? But they came in young. That's the thing. They picked them young. And then they processed them. I need you to see what they did. Number one, they brought them, they brought the best out. And they brought them and they taught them the literature and the language of the Chaldees. What you need to know is that is the literature of the Chaldees is magic. They brought them in. They could see that they had something on the inside. And once that thing is corrupted early, it's done, it's done, it's done. It is called the principle of indoctrination. It's only the church of Jesus Christ that doesn't do indoctrination well. If you look at the... the Orthodox Jews, indoctrination is their thing. That's why at 13, they have the Bal Mitzvah. Because the young boy or the young, the young child has read the Torah back to back. Not just read it, knows it, with, in, in, committed it to memory before he's the age of 13. Because that is how he stands. Because they know that the word of Jehovah is power. Let me tell you someone else. Who knows the principle of indoctrination, the Muslim? It doesn't matter what school their children will go. You see that Quran, they will learn it and they will learn it early. It's indoctrination. We are the only ones who bring our children to church and we talk, lock them in a room and put DVDs for them. Sometimes on censored DVDs and we give them Fanta and Capri Sun and Biscuits and it's jealousy me the parent is very happy to come to church not because they are even going to interact with the word but because in those two three hours they're in church their children are in the hands of a children's church teacher who perhaps doesn't know where to find genesis in the bible and we say oh it's children's church i know there are ministries that are doing better but a huge chunk of us are not doing well at all. We're just taking our children out of the way. Who told you that this that we're teaching right now, that the child cannot understand it? 
The child can understand it. And the reason why the child can understand it is that the things of the spirit are learned by the spirit. And the spirit of man is ageless. Have you ever heard that the spirit is four years old? The spirit of man is ageless. So if you bring a baby and keep the baby in this room, the baby may not be able to articulate it yet. But in the day of darkness, the baby will draw this thing out because it's been deposited in his or her spirit. So they took them and they wanted to indoctrinate them. So they began by the language and the literature. What is the power of language? The power of language is communication and understanding. In this room, it, it doesn't matter how, hard, how loud I shout. If you can't understand English, if you cannot speak English, everything I'm saying today will be useless to you. So they brought them and they said, teach them the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. The second thing they did was that they wanted to change their diet. And you'll be like, what's the big deal about a man's diet? A man can only live at the level of his diet. <coughs> That's why today, um, what are the nutritionists will tell you that what you are eating is killing you. They will say your diet is killing you. Because a man's life is configured at the level of his diet. And the third thing they did was that they changed their names. They took them from Daniel and them, the other names that they had, that had meanings. Each one of this child at birth was dedicated to the God of heaven. Every name that they gave them in Babylon, they dedicated them to their gods, the God Nebo. And so automatically, because that happened, these children had been brought from light and they've been planted in darkness. But again, let me say it one more time. Thank God that he can make, he creates darkness around him, which means that darkness does not scare him. So why they took this young man and they started to process them to become, they said that they had to be fit to stand before the king. When they were processing them to stand before their king, the Lord was using that same darkness, Kayini Mahanda Lebrado, to process them for his glory. Of course, they couldn't refuse that they would not be called the names that they were called. They could not refuse that they wouldn't learn the language and the literature. But they could reject the food. So they made a deal. Because you see what that thing the Bible says. It says that, that away, for every way, uh, temptation, daddy, that God will make a way of escape. Are you, uh, do you remember? The way of escape was God made this thing. He gave Daniel the boldness. And he granted Daniel favor between, in front, be, by, um, before his handler. So Daniel could say to his handler, you see what? Don't just let us eat this food. Don't give us this food. Give us vegetables. Give us water. Rule number one in darkness, do what you can. What I find most of the time is when we find ourselves in darkness, we try to do what everyone else is doing. We try to do what we think they say should be done. But when you truly find yourself in darkness, all you can do is that which you can do. Daniel couldn't do anything but to say, I can't, I can't fight with them about the food, the, the, the name change. I can't even stand before them and say, I'm not going to learn their literature and their language. I actually need it to survive in this place. But I can decide that I won't eat because that will be harming only me. So he broke out this deal. He said, test us for 10 days. Let us not eat your food. And if we look okay, then just give us vegetable and water, and water. When you read that scripture, brethren, you forget one tiny um, detail. That, that meant that they ate vegetable and drank water for three years.
Read your book now. Abi. Is it not in your Bible? He says in verse number 5, And the king assigned for them a daily portion of his own rich and dainty food, of the wine which is, and of the wine which he drank. They were to be so educated and so nourished for three years that at the end of that time, they might stand before the king. Three solid years. Day in, day out. Vegetable water vegetable water vegetable water now i see why we don't like darkness but i promise you that what got processed out of this young man could only have been processed in this level at this level of darkness hallelujah so they took israel's best and they wanted to utilize them for the glory of babylon in one sentence, their sense of identity was where they started from. Because they know once they alter your sense or your understanding of who you are, they have you where they want you. Rule number two, in darkness, hold on to who you know you are. Rule number two, in darkness, hold on to who you know you are. It doesn't matter whether you're cutting rope with your teeth today. And that is indicative that somehow you've been planned, plunged into darkness. What you must not do is give up on what you know you are or who you know you are. Because what had happened to the children of Israel, for an undiscerning eye, might, this young, four uh, young men from Israel, to an undiscerning eye will be promotion. But to the one that is led by the Spirit of God, this is not a promotion. This is a trap of the few, from the pit of hell. But that's why in Romans, God says that, the Bible says that God can use all, it said all things work together for the good of them that love God and them that are called according to his purpose. So Babylon thought that they were trying to derail this young man. What they didn't realize is that what God starts, God finishes. Hallelujah. Amen. The reality, <coughs> brethren, is that most people do not recover from this kind of experience that Daniel and his three friends had. Most people do not recover from it. Most people do not recover from it. If you get in this kind of darkness and God is in it but you don't know, you'll be focused on doing your all to get out of it that it can kill you because if you try to break free prematurely, it can end your life. So for three years, they drank water and they ate vegetable. In that time of processing, Daniel determined that he would stand and live like who he knew he was. The Bible said that he chose not to defile himself. This was not an announcement that Daniel made to his captors. Do you understand that? He didn't announce it to his handlers. He just made himself a promise. He said, if the only thing I can do is not allow my mouth, for it to go through my mouth for the defilement, then that's what I'm going to do. He decided that where he could make a decision, he would. He decided not to eat from the king's table. He was clear that if he could curb his appetite and his craving, he would be able to stand for a long time. Because what you crave will determine your future. What you crave will determine your future. Daniel chapter number 2. Daniel chapter number 2. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams by which his spirit was troubled and agitated and his sleep went from him. Then the king commanded to call the, magic, the magicians, the enchanters, all the soothsayers, the sorcerers and the Chaldeans, and the Chaldeans, the Chaldean diviners, to tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I had a dream and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. 
Then said the Chaldean diviners to the king in Aramaic, the Syrian language, O king, leave forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show you the interpretation. The king answered the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me, and the decree goes forth from me, and I say it with all emphasis. If you do not make known to me the dream with its interpretation, you shall be caught in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So show me the dream and the interpretation of it. Because even in darkness, the one that is processed by God can shine. So the, the king had a dream. And guess what happened? He woke up and forgot the dream. He was troubled in his spirit the dream, the implication of the dream was troubling for him, but he could not remember the details of the dream. Who hasn't dreamt and forgotten here? How many of us go and insist that someone else would tell us what we dreamt? But he's the king. He can decide whatever. Because Daniel had to shine with his friends, the king will orchestrate anything in darkness. So the king said, call me the diviners in, in, in Babylon. They came and he said to them, here's what's going to happen. I, um, I had a dream last night, but I forgot it. Now what I want you to do is to tell me what the dream is and tell me the interpretation. Tell me about a catch tutu situation. They were like, king, if you can tell us the dream, we can tell you. He said, no, I'm not telling you. I can't remember the dream. How am I supposed to? The problem is, you who dreamt, you can't remember. Me, that I didn't even sleep in the same house with you. How am I supposed to know what you dreamt? I, but he didn't even let them finish. He said, if you don't find out, I will deal with you. I will kill you and your entire house will become a dunghill. Hallelujah. They went on back and forth, back and forth. Verse 11 to 12. A rare and weighty thing indeed the king requires. None except the gods can reveal it to the king. And their dwelling is not with human flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. Look at verse 13 carefully. So the decree went forth that the wise men were to be killed. And the officers sought Daniel and his companions to be slain. The chief comet, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God comes to give life and life more abundantly. Brethren, I'm not trying to say to you that darkness will not try to snuff the life out of you. But I'm saying that because what God is put on the inside of you, darkness cannot succeed. Are you listening to this conversation? So when they said that they were going to destroy them, Daniel said, hold on. The Bible said he returned with an answer which was full of prudence and wisdom to Arioch the captain or, the ex or executioner of the king's guard. In verse 17, then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah his companions so that they would desire and request mercy of the god of heaven concerning this secret that daniel and his companions should not perish with the rest of the wise men of babylon then the secret was revealed to daniel in a vision of the night and daniel blessed the god of heaven ha <sighs> did you see that Daniel's thing was not, Father, they said Daniel's uh, darkness is coming to kill us. You know, cause a whirlwind, let me leave. He said, Lord, this is an opportunity for the grace of the solution is to shine forth. Can you use me in your mercy and by your grace? Open the vistas. Let me see what it is that the king slept and saw and give me an interpretation. Because of time, I can't continue to read. But if you read time in verse 21, Daniel said this. He said, in verse 20, he said, Daniel answered, Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever, 
For wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes the kings and sets up kings. <laughs> he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Daniel knew. To walk in the solution is grace. We must have a different view of darkness. You have to see darkness differently. If I stretch you now and say the next time you find yourself in darkness, that you should go and do a thanksgiving, it would look like I'm insensitive. So I'm not going to ask you to go and you know, organize a thanksgiving service because you found yourself in darkness. But I'm saying that you can rejoice. You can rejoice. Because he that is with you is greater than he that is in the world. Our view of darkness must be different. How you see darkness must be different. How you see darkness must be different. We must see darkness as God's opportunity for us. To display the power, his power, and bring him glory. Let me take it one more time. See darkness as God's opportunity for us to display his power and bring him glory. A walk in darkness as solution is, is to put God on display. If you look at Daniel chapter 2 verse 22. Daniel said, he said, God is the one that reveals the secret things. He knows what is in the darkness. Can you see it? And the light dwells in him. Daniel said, I know you thought. By this problem, Daniel would automatically be, be promoted above all the great magicians of Babylon. Darkness can be a blessing. What does the solutionist grace do? The solutionist grace solves problems and brings solutions. Obviously, that's why we call it the solutionist grace. When the solutionist grace is in operation in a man's life, or is released upon a man, that man must be a man who is aligned to God even in darkness. I said Daniel was taken from Israel or from Jerusalem to Babylon akin to darkness. I said when you are in darkness, do what? Do what you can. Daniel, the only thing he could do was not to eat and to drink. And God counted it for something. He did his best within his capacity in that place to align with God. You can't be in darkness and be playing 10 10 with the devil. What you need to know is that the devil feeds you to eat you. <laughs> the reason they wanted them to eat was so that. Even from the inside, they will be contaminated. The solution is grace doesn't speak of itself, but of the one that it represents. Solutionists don't need to score points. <laughs> what that means is that God is the only one that makes you famous and distinguished in his own time. You can't carry the solution is grace and all you want is to be seen all over the place and to be known all over the place. That is how they feed you what you shouldn't eat. <laughs> so the solution is can solve problems. He can bring solutions. The, so, the grace to be a solutionist is released upon, uh, upon a man who is aligned with God even in darkness. When a man is operating under the grace of the solutionist he does not speak of himself but of the one that he represents a solutionist hears god he can hear god 
If there was anything that we will see in the life of Daniel, that he could hear God. Because think about it. If it was me trying to know the dream, 43 things will occur to me one day, isn't it? But he knew exactly the one that was what the, the king dreamed. The solution is, allows himself to see throne room perspective. I love perspective and next week we are going to dwell on perspective. Because no one can succeed in God except he has perspective, the bright kind of perspective. But just to say that the solution is, is one that has throne room perspective. He sees things as God sees them. So while you are crying that you are being punished because you've been thrown into jail, the solution is, is praying in jail, Lord, what will you do with me in this jail? Who exactly is here that needs Jesus? Number three, a solution is doesn't settle. He doesn't settle. He always at every point knows that more exists and wants hungers and works for more. He works for it. He hung, he, let's begin from he hungers. He hungers for it. He wants it and he works for it. Please note that this more is not bring light. <laughs> this more is what did they hide here that made them bring me? <laughs> I don't know whether you get it. What did they hide for here when they carry me come here? What exactly? Why is it dark here? Because I'm of the light. You need to understand something. If as a child of God you find yourself in darkness, you are supposed to be of the light. If you find yourself in darkness, God was watching you walking into darkness. There must be something that they had hidden there and God is saying, go and carry it and bring it out for me. Do you understand this conversation? So your question is, where, where the bury am? <laughs> Where did they bury it? Because there's no way I'm leaving darkness empty-handed. Children of God, you need to stop living. You know, they'll carry you go darkness. Or do you, do you, do you, do you go stick them out? Empty hand. What was the point? You have just wasted opportunity. And the reason that happens is when we get there, we're just complaining, we're whining, we're crying. Get me out of here, get me out of here, get me out of here. As if God death or him blind, you know, see when you they enter. He saw you, but he was so pleased that you were going in. He was so sure that you were going to come out with the loot. The solution is doesn't settle. The solution is he's a standard bearer. He does not water down God's standards for convenience. He does not water God's standards for man. The solution is stands. Even in darkness, Daniel said, I cannot defile myself with the king's food. I can't do it. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Because we will see him stand when they said people should bow. He said, I cannot bow to anyone but the God of heaven. He refused to bow. Where did he end up? Tika darkness. The lions then. Then they said, not a problem. The God who brought me and surrounded me with this darkness is the one that created the lion. By the time they came, the lion's mouth had been sealed. <laughs> read your Bible. If you read your Bible, you'll not complain again. He's a standard bearer. He doesn't drop anything simply because it is inconvenient. The solution is, is dynamic and kingdom focused. One of the things that is killing to modern day solution is, is that is the spirit of how we used to do it. God is dynamic. God is dynamic. When we started, discipleship class was what we started first and we put it online. People complained. I had ministers who told me, 
that the ministry will not grow if I continue to do online meetings. They told me to shut down online meetings and only do in-person meetings. They said, now that they have tasted what you can do, shut it down and tell them to come if they want what you have. But the Holy Spirit said to me, it's not whether, about whether they come or not. It's about what I want to do through you in their lives. So we kept it online. And we had been online since 2015. For those of you who didn't know. And 2020, everybody had to go online. Plus the ministers that said, tell them to come. A solution is this dynamic. And the Lord has been speaking to me about Nigeria. Unusual things will happen between now and May 2023. Strange people will be walking out of their homes to go and pick up forms to contest elections. They will be the strangest kind of people because we had never heard about them before. And their family members will be crying and say, you are enlisting for darkness. But if you are online and you're listening to me today and you've been sitting on the fence, that God said for such a time, God says it's for such a time as this. The rest of us, we have to keep our ears peeled and our eyes opened. God, we identify these men and women for us. And our job is to be on our faces praying for them day and night. Because the day has come. And no matter how thick this darkness is, out of that darkness, God is going to raise men. (laughs) Solution is, I said, a dynamic. They are not religious. They are open to an adventure in and with God. Solution is a compassionate people. They are compassionate people. They are compassionate people. You know Daniel, with the level of grace on Daniel's lives, life, and even in this case, there was Daniel could have done something that he would be the only one that was delivered from death. But he didn't do it that way. Do you understand? They are compassionate people. There are many characters that I can highlight today, but I'm not going to because I want to focus on Daniel. Each episode or each installment, I want to try and focus on the one person so that you know that they are bound in the Bible and you may be hiding under your bed. It is who you are. (laughs) Solution is a courageous people. Because 80% of the time, the things that God wants you to battle out of darkness into light are the things that men will be afraid to stand in front of. But the mindset of a solution is, is what's the point of living if I can't bring the loot out of this darkness? I told you that every Sunday when I come, I'll tell you the story of how those, a, a few years Many years ago now, we were buying a plot of land for church. And the landlord kept moving the goalpost. And someone said to me, why are you people even negotiating with the landlord? Go into your rooms and pray. Pray so that the landlord will lose his mind. He will just wake up one day and come and give you guys the papers. And then you people will get the land for free. As, and he, she quoted the scripture. Because as far as she was concerned, to get the treasures of darkness, we have to um, twist people. We have to manipulate them. No, the greatest way to get the treasures of darkness is to step into darkness and show darkness that you can't be swallowed by it. Because then you master darkness. And anytime something is left in the dark, they will come and call you, go bring it. Because they know it's your expertise. Do you understand that conversation? They are courageous people. 
And solution is, I endowed with wisdom. They are endowed with wisdom. They are endowed with wisdom. In closing, I want us to go to Matthew chapter 21. How many of us know what Sunday it is today? It's Palm Sunday, yes? Go with me to Matthew 21. I want to read with you, to you, verse 6 to 11. And I'll tie it up so that you see that even Jesus was processed in darkness. In John, uh, Matthew 21, verse 6, it says, Then the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and, li- and laid their coats upon them. And he seated himself on them. And most of the crowd kept spreading their garments on the road. And others kept cutting branches from the trees and scattering them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed him kept shouting, Hosanna, oh, be propitious, graciously inclined to the son of David, the Messiah. Blessed, praise, glorified is the he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, oh, be favorably disposed in the highest heaven. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the people, be- all the city became agitated and trembling with excitement. All the city became en- agitated and trembling in excitement said, who is this? And the crowds replied, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. When you see this, if you don't know your Bible, you'll be envious of Jesus. But this is what is called Passion Week. This is his journey towards the cross. He will carry a cross up Calvary and they will nail him to it and he will die. Jesus had all the power yet he had to withhold that power because darkness was required for you and me to sit here today. Someone had to topple darkness on our behalf. And that's why the Bible says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken. So that you too can carry your cross. So that you too can be processed in darkness properly. So that you too will no longer be afraid of darkness. Last Sunday I told you that if this room, if you were sitting in this room and it suddenly went the lights went out and it was in the thick of the night and it became dark what did i tell you i said if you stay still for two minutes your eyes or your sight will adjust to the darkness and you'll be able to move around brethren what the darkness what makes us afraid of darkness is the illusion that darkness can destroy us but our god dwells in darkness Zebra da tu sekete ye me yega du kasuka ti labira di shandali madekete. Our God lives in darkness. So when something puts its hand on you and says, Oh, yeah, enter darkness, you ought to look at it and say, Okay, go on, song. You ought to begin to tell your family members as you are going, okay, begin to dig a reservoir, I'm coming. Because when I come out, there's no way I'm coming empty handed. I am going to be coming back with treasures. If you be still, the God of heaven will adjust your sight in the darkness. Why is Sister B teaching these things? I'm teaching them to you because God is in their need of solutionists. But how will you know what to do unless you've been trained to do it? My job here is to train you for manifestation in case you don't know. Not everyone will manifest on top of a hill. Some of us will manifest in caves. Because even in in the grave, Jesus was still Lord. (laughs) 
My brothers and my sisters, here is the point that I'm trying to make. Two Saturdays ago, we had a retreat here and my sister Nene said something that hit me in the gut. He said, when you begin to dance, I'm a city on the, on the top of a hill. She said, you are also a sitting target. Yes. <laughs> what that means is that darkness can overwhelm someone on top of the hill. And darkness can touch someone in the cave. What we are trying to do is demystifying darkness. To recognize that there are things that God is hid in darkness. Only, only processed sons can go in there. And in this house, we prepare you to go in and bring it out. That's what it is. I'm not even surprised at the kinds of messages I know because I'm leaving it. I know because I'm leaving it. So last week, the altar call was if you were in darkness and you were feeling overwhelmed, you should come. Today, that's not the altar call. The altar call is who wants to be enlisted in darkness. Hi. Rise on your feet. If you would like for God to try to use you in places that ordinary men are not used. It is time to lift your hands to heaven. It is time to come and say, Lord, if you can use anything, you can use me, oh God. Okay. Some of us don't want to be enlisted in darkness. But the reality is, some of us we be enlisted by force. <laughs> And as a matter of fact, if God brought you to the well, I can hear the devil sandili magadeka teli brado kuzon toluma de gadi gadi galagada do 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 ba. Eke shendeli magadaga tata yi gali 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 galamadi kasendeli brado to soda. I can hear gali 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 magada. Get a prato sondolu madika ta ye gelege de gede baga tu ta ye madiga do. Brazindali magada de 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 baduka seke teli madodo do. Braza candale me ge de ge gadika tila me gadiga la gada de de de. Bratu sandali magada gata shadege de bodoto sondo. Izalebra da di kata yi magada gadege de 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 kata yi madiga zika ta yi badoma. Aga je tele madega di kata yi gadodo. Ezendeli magada kateli magade gete ke libada kusandali magata te. Brazu koto to ye magida gida 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 gada kata yi magate ke shandali gada do abrate ke te kate ye madika ta yi gali gada do sanda ege lege 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 kaka kaka gati patu shalu madika ti kali magaka se gede gede deta galu brado sondo lu madika tege ege de gede bagata ti amiga da gadeke gasunde le mega da gika katula magadika ta ye me de ke te librato shoda ah Ya la 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 la. Ikati kali magada do to to. Yepa kashanda yimage. Ikali magata ta yimadu kasi gali gali kata ta yigala gato soda. Gabrata sende zeke kete yema. Yuba du gadu da du mada gada gata ti ya liga 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 de 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 boto kusundo. Iga la gada gada gadi kata ta yimada te shende liba do. Zebra da kata. Zepratu sandali magata kete 
Zekaka to Madika Sindali Madika Tei Galagotas Zepratas Shandali Megede Brazugede Gemakata Yimagita Esheke Kekete Lika Tula Vigadus Zebra da 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 Brasata ye mege de gede de bakatili madika shanda libra de ke sende lima do Eke te yi magata kata yi galiga diga daga de Azinda li magika tosho tonu brada gita kita yi madaka sege lega de gede de 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 Batu cha yi magato Jekeke ke te liga daga da Jepraga sekanda yi magateke ye ke te liga ta yi gatu kadu madi sanda yi gado Brata ta ye Zege le badu kata yi madika ziga lima gade de Gashika ta yi madado do to to you madiga de 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 Rasandali madika ta yi gadi gadi badata sandali bado do 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 Rasiga lima gate te There's someone that needs to pray this moment. And your prayer is simple. May I not waste my time in darkness. May I not waste my time in darkness. May I not waste my time in darkness. May I not waste. Ah, if you waste that time. It will be a colossal waste of heaven's resources. I will not waste. I will not waste my time. Father Lord. We are willing. We are available. We will be obedient for what you want to do in the nest father find us worthy of your solution is grace in the name of Jesus Lord I pray for men and women online who say yes I'm saying yes to this processing father Lord the same grace you released in this room today release upon them Father Lord, may they walk in it. May they not waste it. And may your name be glorified. If you are in this room or you are online and you are yet to give your life to Jesus, quickly pray wherever you are right now and say with me, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Father, we worship you. We honor your name. And we give you praise. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.